for our Woodlawn Hospital report as uh, we're joined now by Brad Rogers and Krista. Good morning. Well, good, morning. good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, as we get ready for uh, the end of the year, getting closer and closer. Can you believe it? You know what? The holiday season, boy, it hits us fast, doesn't it? It does. It does hit us awful fast and awful hard, but uh, especially this week with the changing of the temperature. <laughs> we got spoiled the first part of November. Absolutely. As, as many might uh, have the same situation. A lot of times my wife doesn't allow me to get my vehicle in the garage. <laughs> and I learned that lesson this week again with the uh, changing mm -hmm. temperatures and the tires. So I went out one morning and very quickly realized, I'm going to put some air in these tires. <laughs> Cold weather's changed things. Yeah. It does, it does. Well, how are things at Woodlawn as uh, the, the uh, temperatures start changing? Well, uh, hopefully everybody's out there safe and watchful of ice and things like that. and. You know, thank goodness we haven't had any major snow yet. Not yet. Um, knock on wood. Um, so hopefully uh, that'll keep going and we won't have too many of those slips and trips and, and pulled muscles and those kinds of things. So, but you uh, know, yeah. we probably will eventually. We will typically eventually <laughs> see some of those unfortunate hip fractures and uh, broken wrists and, and arms from reaching out trying to catch themselves when they slip on the ice. So just do the best you can. Be as, be as safe as you can. And, I don't know if you've ever heard of yak tracks, but yak tracks are those little things you can buy online or over okay. here at the local Walmart, and they just slide over your shoes and they have little coils on the bottom that mm -hmm. catch into ice. Uh -huh. Very inexpensive, fit yeah. multiple shoe sizes. They're used a lot up north, okay. so yeah, something to think about. There you go. No, no plug there though at all, because no. I get nothing for that. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, you had your monthly board report and uh, things looking good? Yeah, you know, uh, October, was um, a pretty good month overall. Um, you know, you never know from month to month because so much of our business is based on the health and wellness of the community. Mm -hmm. And, you know, unfortunately, sometimes when people are very ill, then, then we have a really busy month. Um, and, you know, that is our job to be there and take care of that. But um, October was a little bit busier overall. Thank goodness more on the outpatient side, so not as many inpatients. Um, we did have a $66,000 operational profit for the month, um, which is our goal every month. We just can we make money on the things we do inside the four walls of the hospital mm -hmm. um, and manage our expenses uh, the, the team did a really good job of managing expenses and so we did have a profit for the month uh, net income for that month was about three hundred thousand dollars and really what that does is is that puts our year-to-date operational revenue um, at about one hundred and fifteen thousand. so again for the year we're able to show a small profit on the things we're doing in the four walls of the hospital good um, and really, if you look at that from year to year, what that means is we're about four and a half million dollars um, above our expectations and about four point four million dollars different than we were last year on our net revenue overall. Um, so a big change from last year, a lot of hard work the team's been doing and it's it's starting to we're starting to see some real positive benefits to that. Well, between the hard work and, and what I want to call normal, getting back to a somewhat of a normal, uh, where people are going to the doctor for, for even just the little things that there for a few years weren't. Absolutely. You know, things like uh, colonoscopies that are that are needed for screenings, you know, 45 to the new 50. And so, <laughs> guys, you got to get in there and get checked. We're seeing that come back. Yeah. Uh, people are feeling comfortable again to go back and get those things done. So that's, that's important not only for us as an organization, but for the community. Right. We want you guys to get the things you need to do on a wellness perspective yeah. uh, and ladies to to make sure you stay healthy moving forward. Um, we also talked about quite a few projects mm -hmm. um, in, in the board meeting. And, and one of the new things, a capital item that we're going to be adding to Woodlawn Hospital is um, fluoroscopy equipment. Fluoroscopy equipment is uh, the best case, the uh, best thought process, I guess, would be is it's real-time x-rays. Uh -huh. It's, you know, x-ray typically is a snapshot in time and you see a picture. Fluoroscopy is three-dimensional, real-time x-ray hmm. we use it for swallow studies okay. things like that um, so our equipment is a, a little bit older and we we need to replace it so the board voted to approve that and so we're very thankful for that um, so that'll be coming here in the next couple months and then working on some kind of some programs and things we're doing at the hospital to make things smoother for the patients um, one of them is our er throughput so our goal is to get people in tests, all the lab work, all the things they need to, seen by physician and out as streamlined as possible. So we've enacted some, or they've enacted some um, nurse-driven 
uh, protocols, which basically allows them from the moment you walk in the door to go ahead and get the labs, the images, those things needed before the doctor even gets a chance mm. to see you so that it's ready right there in front of them. So that's going to improve the speed and, and yeah. uh, throughput there for the ER. Um, and then we're doing a few other things at the hospital um, always to kind of make sure that we're staying fully accredited, staying fully safe for you. And so we had Purdue and, and you know, my uh, IU, my <laughs> IU sensibility <laughs> is a little upset about this. I was going to say, how can you say that? But we had Purdue come out and they did a full IT assessment of our security. So how, how secure are the systems we have at Woodlawn to make sure we protect your health mm -hmm. information and the information of the internal workings. And then we got a, you know, as we got an A from Purdue. Um, <laughs> we did a really good job. And um, so uh, compliments to the IT staff and, and them for taking care of all of our safety and security of our information. They That's do a good. great job. Um, and then really one more thing, just kind of to note that you may see over the next um, couple months, you know, Woodlawn Hospital has transitioned to Woodlawn Health. Right. And we've done so because the hospital is just a small fraction of what we do. It's our physicians in the clinics. It's our ancillary services and all of those things. So to go along with that, we're, we're changing our web address mm -hmm. eventually. <laughs> and then we're also changing our own internal emails. So over the next month or so, you may see an email come back to you that it used to be from brogers at woodlawnhospital.com. Yes. Now it's going to say brogers at woodlawnhealth.org uh -huh. because we are a nonprofit. And so our, our tagline at the end of our emails will be changing. Okay. So you'll see that transition over the next few months. Gotcha. Just be Heads aware. Up. It's still me. <laughs> it's still you. It really is. It just has a little bit different tag at the end. Oh, uh, that's good. Yes. That's good. And then, Krista, if you want to talk about some of the things we've got coming up, that'd be great as well. So we are, um, this Friday, weather depending, I should say. Um, if it's cold and rainy, we'll see if we come out. But, but we should be out. Um, We'll do downtown welcoming Santa in with, um, we have some Santa Christmas cookie makers um, that mm. our volunteers have been working on. So I'm um, stopped by. Not Brad, right? No. 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 Okay. no. Brad. Well, it was Brad's I'm a not cookie, cookie eater. Not a maker. Not a maker. Yeah. <laughs> Brad's our, he's our tester, not our maker. <laughs> but we have some Christmas cookie makers. So um, stop by, say hi. Um, our team will be out to meet and greet as Santa comes to town here in Rochester. Um, and then on Tuesday, coming up in less than a week, December 5th, from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. in the Fulton County Community Center. We have um, a health fair that's targeted to the whole community, but especially seniors. So we'll be doing some giveaways and some prizes. So please, if you're able, come out to the Fulton County Community Center and um, just say hi, and it's a great opportunity to learn what services we have in our community here in Fulton County. And last but not least, on December 17th, um, Santa will th be uh, leaving uh, the North Pole and he will be coming to Akron yeah. and our team will be there as well um, to do some games while uh, the kiddos wait to tell Santa what they want for Christmas and eat cookies. So mm, Sounds like a fun time. Yeah, so if Absolutely. you're in the area, stop by. We'd yeah. love to say hi. I, I like how she you know, bribes everybody with cookies. You know, She knows the way to everybody's heart, right? It's that time Through of the year. Stomach. That's that time of year. <laughs> Absolutely. Holiday cookies are the best. Um, and, and I guess one of the only other things I want to kind of mention that we talked about at the board meeting is um, we're working really hard at the hospital to do the vetting process for a changeover in our electronic health record. So that's something the board is very, very adamant that we need to work towards in the hospital as a whole. We're going to move towards that. If people don't know, we, you know, we have two current medical records technically. There's one that's in your physician offices and then there's one at the hospital. Mm -hmm. And they're two separate systems and that's the way we've had it for you know 17 years that I've been here. <laughs> um, so we're making that transition. It's a two-year process. Wow. So uh, um, you're going to hear more about that just kind of as we move forward. But that's something that we're working towards where we get down to one unified system. Um, that'll be easier for the community and easier for the staff as well. So I mean, realistically just talking about it, it kind of makes sense. I mean, you know, I mean, just especially with everybody being on campus more now and, and able to do stuff, if you go to one of the other clinics because you're closer to them, mm -hmm. everything's Absolutely. right there. Makes Absolutely. sense. Absolutely. You know, it, it, what we have is a very good choice for when we chose it. Right. Um, it was designed for those separate entities at that time. As we have grown, 
um, we are we are outgrowing our capacity with those two systems, and so we need to get down to a unified system. The other nice thing about a unified system, and depending on which one we end up going with, the vast majority of the larger ones connect to other hospitals. Yeah. So if you happen to have been in Indianapolis and had something done, and and you want your physician here to see that record, That's if true. we have one of those top four or five systems, that's automatic. They wow. can pull it right into the chart. So it makes the continuity of care yeah. so much easier yeah. for the staff and, and for you as a patient. So that's something you'll hear about in the next couple of years, sir, yeah. as so we're moving forward. To your process. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. We, we will be on a new system by uh, the end of November in 2025. So it's literally a two-year process. Something to work, look Absolutely. forward to. A lot of work coming up. Be like your construction, right? You know, what would the date change? No, <laughs> not, not on that one. Yes. not change. That one's, is, that one's gotta be done. This is an IT timeline, not a contractor timeline. <laughs> they are a little bit different. A little different. Yeah, so it's yes, good. we will it's be good. up and running though. Awesome, awesome. Uh, on that note, uh -huh. just as a reminder, um, we did take Fulton County Medical Clinic back to our campus. Um, We've been eating lunch, or we've had team eating lunch at Jaredi's, and we've seen people try to get into the doors at Fulton County Medical Clinic. And so just be aware that we're still here for the community. We've just changed locations, and we no longer will be at that building. Um, so just as a reminder, people. Yeah, it's a great thing, Krista, because you know we, we do have patients, and, and many of us are those patients that maybe we only go to the doctor a couple times a year, right? And maybe we don't have the newspaper those kinds of things so we didn't see all of those ads and things we put out there and then you make that appointment because the phone number is the same <laughs> and you haven't been into town in a few months and all of a sudden you show up and I've seen it myself too yeah. sitting at Duretti's and and look over and see somebody trying to get in the door over there so yes we are at 1432 East 9th Street on the north side of the Schaefer beautiful Road. new location oh it's gorgeous yeah um, we actually had a, a, a Accreditation survey from the State Board of Pharmacy okay. last week, and they were just ecstatic at how pretty it was. Awesome. Loved it, and obviously the team did a fabulous job, and we passed with flying colors, but yeah. um, it is a really nice operation over there. So. All right. Well, appreciate you guys coming in. Thanks Enjoy the, uh, the festivities that are coming up, and we'll look forward to talking to you before the end of the year. Absolutely. You guys have a wonderful holiday season. You guys, too.